In this video, we'll set up the Featured Content slider within Suffusion Theme. The Featured Content slider allows us to set selected images in a slider window. These images will rotate, and when an image is clicked, it will take the user to specified landing pages that you want your traffic to notice. To make the most of these Featured Content sliders, you'll need to have developed some nice-looking graphics that will display in your Featured Content area. For this tutorial, I've developed some graphics using Photoshop Elements. You can purchase this software program for under $100 at Amazon, and it's well worth the price. In the article below, you can find a link to some excellent Photoshop Elements training videos. So we're ready to get started creating our featured content slider. There are several important ground rules that I want to cover as we get started. These rules aren't set in stone, but following them will improve the look of your featured content area. Rule number one, use a featured image for every post that you want to show in your featured section. Doing this will ensure that there will be no blank space which can look fairly unprofessional. Here's what happens when you don't follow this rule. Rule number two, Use featured images that are at least as wide as your post area. Basically, this means that if your main content area is 600 pixels wide, then your featured content images will need to be 600 pixels wide. Again, when the images are not as wide as the post area, the impression will be less than professional. Here's what a page may look like if the images are not equal to the post area width. Rule number three. Don't use too many featured posts. Using too many featured posts can make the script sluggish and give you results that will be less than desirable. So the first thing we want to do is define where we want to set the featured content slider. There are quite a number of options here, and you'll just need to decide which of these you'd like to select. You can choose from a variety of post types, or you can designate specific static pages to show your slider on. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose to display the featured content slider on one static page. I've already created that page, and I've titled it Suffusion Featured Content Slider. So let's select that. Now, we'll set the number of posts that we'd like to show here. Try and keep this number less than 5 to 10. If you apply a large number, this will make the script a bit sluggish. Remember, this section is for featured content, that means important content. We'll leave this set to hide duplicate posts for now, and we'll hide sticky posts for now, and we'll hide the latest posts. Since we're hiding the latest posts, we can ignore this setting. Here, we can select the categories that we would like to show. Selecting a category will show all of the posts in the specified category. For now, we're not going to select any categories. Here, we'll select the pages that we want to show for the featured content slider. I have four pages that I specifically want to use, so I'll select those. If you just have a few specific posts that you want to include in your featured content area, you can enter the page ID for each one and separate each ID with a comma. You can also do the same for the specified tags here. If you're not sure what a page ID is, you can locate the page ID for any page or post while you're editing that specific page. If you look up in the navigation bar, you'll see a number. The number is the page or post ID. Next, we'll set the order of preference for picking up images. I personally like to set the image for the featured content area found in the additional suffusion options, which I'll cover shortly. If an image is not found for your first preference, the next one is looked for. Let's stop for a minute and take a look at each one of these image locations. The image specified through the Custom Featured Image field is found in the Additional Suffusion Options area. Let's open a page for editing and take a look at this. Below the area where the main content of the page is placed, there's a section titled Additional Suffusion Options. In this area, when you click on the image text, you will see two blank fields. The field that's designated Featured Image is where you'll place the URL for that image. The reason why I like to put this first is that this allows the image to display in your Featured Content slider, but not within the content of the page. 
If you select the native WP 3.0 featured image to be first, this image will be used on the page or post and also in the featured content slider. Usually, your featured content slider will span the length of the page and per rule number two, you'll want to use an image in the slider that will span that width. The WP 3.0 featured image box is not fluid and so the image that shows up on your page will only be a small piece of the image from your featured content slider. I think best practice would be to set your images to pick up the Suffusion featured image and then the native WP 3.0 featured image and then an image that's attached to the post. Now on to the next image area. The next area titled native WP 3.0 featured image is also found on the same page when you're editing. This area is simply titled featured image. When any image is placed in this area it will show at the beginning of the content of your page. Let me show you an example of this. Next, we'll set the transition effect for the slider. I like to use a simple fade, but as you can see, there are quite a number of options here, and you may want to play around with these settings to see which one works best for you. Here, you can choose when you want to have the next image show, and here, you can control the length of time that each image will show before transitioning to the next. If you have any custom styles applied to your featured content slider, you can use this checkbox to override the default custom style. Dealing with this is beyond the scope of this video, and I'm going to leave this unchecked for now. Next, you can define the height of the featured post section. The default is 250 pixels, and this is what I'm going to stick with. Here, you can choose to add a border to the featured post area if you'd like. The theme default is to show the border. I'm going to select hide the border for now because I'm going to add a border to each of my images that I'll create using Photoshop Elements. You can set the size of the featured image here. We're going to leave this image set to full size. If you've set custom sizes above, you'll need to enter the custom height and width in the respective fields, and if you're resizing, you can set how you want those images to be resized. You'll have to play around with this if you want to do resizing. Checking this box will stretch any images that are smaller than the width of the featured content slider. Next, if we want, we can set some text to display as an overlay on the image. We can show the post title and excerpt for each associated featured image, or we can choose to show only the image. If you choose to show text, this setting will designate where the slider text shows. If you've chosen not to use images that are of equal size to the featured content area, you can center them in the content area by checking this box. If you add text to the featured content slider, the next three settings will style the text and the background color behind the text. The final settings below allow you to control the post index area. This post index area will give your traffic a way to engage the slider if they desire to do so. Here's an example of the slider with no post index area activated. Here is activated with bullets, and here is an example of activated with numbers. Okay, now that we've tweaked all of these back end settings, we'll save the page, and now let's take a look at what we have. As you can see, we have a blank featured content area with a few random images appearing here and there. This is because we've not associated any full-sized featured content images with the pages that we've selected, so the content slider picks up whatever image is available in the order that we set the slider settings. So now, we're ready to add the images to each page that we've displayed in the featured content slider. In the next video, We'll add the images that I've created to the featured content area and see what the results look like.